Indeed, it's a privilege to be saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. Something is happening to me. Very strong sense of peace. I have been warned that I would not return to court for that case. My healing was actually complete. And that God heals us in different ways. And heal divinely, he can heal through surgery, through drugs and all that. Then I knew that it was my center. When I came back, I had more than enough. In the contract, they actually specified how much we'll get. It was exactly the amount I asked of God the December before. Real life stories of what God has done and continues to do. Wow, I'm always amazed by God's wonderful acts. And welcome to A Testimony A Day. The Bible says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Has the Lord been good to you? I'm sure he has. Just as he's been to everyone that we're going to hear from today. Join us as we take a look at some interesting things that the Lord has been doing in the lives of his children. I, I fellowship yeah. at a church called Guiding Light Assembly. Yeah. And I belong to the intercessory group of Guiding Light Assembly. Yeah. And um, one of us had lost her mom and um, I invited us to um, come to the burial ceremony, which was um, in a village after Ibadan. I can't really remember the name right now. And um, I mean, she's been a wonderful sister and all that. And um, I just made, made up my mind that I was going to go. Um, so well, then came the weekend and uh, lo and behold, my driver was a no-show, did not turn up and um, I mean, for me, it was no option not to go because really I'd intended to go. And not only that, um, I had three other sisters that were taking a ride with me, you know, so really, you know, um, so I just said, well, I mean, why not? I could drive, you know, I, I didn't have, you know, issue driving um, distance. So um, that was how I got into the car, my sister. And uh, we headed, I picked up with three other sisters, you know, along the way and uh, we, went, we headed for Ibadan. Um, so we, we embarked on the journey, you know, when you have your sisters who were, you know, busy chatting, praising the Lord, doing all, you know, that sisters do when they get together. So, um, and I think that the construction of the Lagos Ibadan road had started, oh, is it the reconstruction now? Well, um, I'd started at that period, just started, you know, at that time. So, there were pockets of traffic, you know, along the along the way, and I think we waded through most of the traffic, and um, we were on a clear, so to say. And I mean, for me, I'm a very fast driver. You know, <laughs> I'm sure you can testify to that. You know, uh, for me, oh, that was just license to step on the gas and uh, let's get this journey over with. Right. Um, so I didn't realize that not only were we in the clear, there, there were just about three of us on the road really at that point. I think the traffic is sealed some other motorists, you know, um, uh, uh, back. So um, there we were, we were enjoying our ride. We were on the inner lane, I think, I think the, la the lane to the left side, you call the, 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 the inner lane or the outer lane, whichever one is called. Uh, we were to the left side of the road. Um, so we were already in the clear, like I said, um, some, most of the cars were still stuck in the traffic behind us. So three cars had pulled out, you know, of that traffic. Um, we were one of them, there was a towing vehicle and another station wagon on the road. And um, of course, you know, for me, it was, let's just get this journey over. So I'd stepped on the, on, on the gas and we were, we were moving as fast as we could, and then um, there was a sister sitting beside me. I said, "Oh, said where you need to slow down. You know, you're you're almost hit, hitting. I think maybe 110 or 120, right?" So I said, "Okay," that I was going to do that. So um, I slowed down a little bit. Not quite a minute after slowing down, the towing vehicle suddenly veered into their lane, went into the open divide, and was off facing the opposite direction to Lagos. Had she not slowed down, 
Sister Dupa is convinced she would have collided with a towing truck. Um, because I slowed down and mm -hmm. it wasn't quite one or two minutes after I'd slowed down that the station wagon, no, no, it, first it was the um, tow, towing vehicle, on the right side of the road just came right into our lane. The station wagon did exactly the same thing. It went into the open divide and headed in the opposite direction of traffic. The road was free and Sister Dupa's normal instinct was to step on the accelerator. However, from the vantage point of a hilly part of the road, she could see a bit of commotion further down. I was like wondering, okay, so what was going on? You know your train of thoughts, you know, what was going on and all the rest of it. And I was just going to barrel through as, you know. She decided to slow down and try to understand what was going on. All of a sudden, I saw this guy almost right in front of a car to my own side, you know, um, of a car. And I saw him and he was like, oh, this is it, mm -hmm. you know, because I've never in the entirety of my life come, been in a robbery incident, mm -hmm. come face to face with an armed robber. Mm -hmm. Not, I've heard stories, but never in my life had. Mm -hmm. And there was this guy, mm -hmm. you know, almost like strutting towards us, the front of the car, just a few meters. The man was wearing a short booba top over his shirt, and he was carrying an AK-47 rifle. And he was like, wow, this is it. So immediately it occurred to me what must have been. It was, I mean, it came clear what was happening, you know, further down, that there was a robbery that was going on. The guy was just strolling towards us. I think what, I mean, to my own um, estimation, what must have been going on is that, oh, these ones are, because we're almost, you know, grinding to a halt, that these ones, you know, I've caught these ones. Um, and it was just kind of strolling, and all of a sudden, mm. all of a sudden, and I believe this was simply the Holy Spirit because, I mean, seeing such a scene for the first time in my life, mm. the, the, the normal reaction I would have expected from myself mm. was to have been petrified mm -hmm. to the point that I would not have been able to move. But all of a sudden, I just swerved to the left side of the, of the road. We were already on the inner road, so we were just next to the divide. And the grasses in the divide were as tall. I mean, you go into it. The grass was so tall on this part of the road, they swallowed up their car. Sister Dupa suddenly veered the car into the divide as her companion in front screamed out for her not to go into the bush. At that point, it was like all other noises were just sealed off, you know, for me. And I went right into it to get to the other side of the road, just as the other guys, you know, did, so that we could also face Lagos and escape. And doing that, what was going through my mind, well, before that, went in, tried to come out, was my, the nose of a car was already on the road, you know, so the first two tires were already on the other side of the road. Now, I was accelerating to get the two tires at the back to get on the road so that we could move. And the tires were rolling. The, I was, I mean, I'd pedaled all the way down and the car was not moving. Sister Dupe wondered whether she hadn't done something stupid, endangering not only her life, but the lives of those with her. What was going on in my mind is that, look, um, this guy had thought we had stopped, that he had us. And then some silly woman had the audacity to try and make an escape. You know, that the next thing I was expecting to hear were gunshots. And I was expecting those gunshots to be made mm. for our tires because I leave, if he shot the tires, we were not going anywhere. So in my mind, what was going on? Why has he not started shooting? Why has he not started shooting? Why has he not started shooting? At the same time, I was accelerating. The tires were rolling. There was no... And all these things, I think, within maybe two, three, four minutes maximum. And all of a sudden, I just felt like, you know, when you're going on the road and somebody bumps into you, you know, that, just that little shove. I just, it was like something just shoved the bomb of a car. I could, not, not that I could feel it. That something, some, some hand just 
bumped the rear of a car you know where where you have you know um you know where you have the boot just bumped it and then we were before i knew we were on the other side of the road mm -hmm. and we had and when we, we we are driven about one or two minutes and i was i was i, I guess i must have spoken out because it's the student answered me i said you know i must have said something to the effect that why was he not shooting why was he not shooting and then she now said didn't you see mm -hmm. i said see what she said she it was struggling with the gun that the gun had got caught inside his dashiki and he was oh. struggling to bring it out and then the sisters at the back said you know that at that point that the guys the other guys in the valley that were robbing they were rob robbing you know a boss that were running a, a boss had noticed that there was somebody something going on with him and one of them had detached from what was happening there to come and join him um, I guess maybe to help him out or something. But we had escaped the snare of a father to the glory of his name. And we just sped towards Lagos. And after a few minutes, I just thought, well, no, this is not right. You know, that the other two guys must have seen this and they did not want us. And they just went their way. So I said, no, this is not right. So we went back into the divide to drive close to the oncoming traffic from Lagos mm -hmm. and started waving to oncoming motorists that please stop, stop, don't go any further. You know, there's a robbery going on further and all the rest. And as the Lord would have it, you know, is a ma master orchestrator of, mm -hmm. you know, circumstances and situations. Not quite, in fact, maybe another 30 seconds or so, there was this convoy. I don't know what, maybe some some important personality, I think, you know. So they had, you know, loads of all these patrol cars with armies and all the rest, you know. She was able to flag them down, informing them of the situation ahead. The soldiers started firing into the air as their vehicles approached the troubled spot. You know, and we just stayed there in that divide, you know, and waited for all the um, drama, you know, to subside. And after I subsided, it was like, ah, we should go back to the guys. We had meant to go to this battle. So we're going to this battle by the grace of, of, of Jehovah. So we just turned back to the other side from the divide, just got onto the other side, you know, um, of the road. And there we went all the way to this village in a battle. And, you know, we went and did what we had to do, got back to Lagos. The gun was not tangled. I mean, for me, that was that was the action of the angel of the Lord, or the angel of the Lord in action, whichever way you know you want to put it. You know, uh, because if he had been able to get that gun, then we were gunners. You know, we were gunners. But here we are today. Every single one of us alive till today, this day, praising and giving glory to the Lord for such a miraculous deliverance. You know. Um, in 1996, we lost our first, our eldest child. She died at the age of 10 and a half. And for three years, we were like, um, you know, we were in serious grieving. And then, and I, and I remember asking the Lord once, I said, Lord, just give me the second, the second laughter of Sarah. You know, she had the first laughter, then she had the second. So I said, Lord, just give me the second laughter of Sarah. So when our son, three years later, he was born and looked so much like our late daughter, but came as a boy. And we named him Oluwakwa Mileni Ayo, which means God has given me joyous laughter, yes. And he's been an amazing child.
in December 2014, uh, I went to the redemption camp for the Holy Ghost Congress of that year. I was there for about four days. And the Congress ended on Sunday, 14th of December. And I was just getting ready to come home when my driver told me that uh, somebody had just called him that our house was on fire. I thank God that um, I already I knew that whatever happened, God knew about it and he would take control. So I was composed and I told him that we should just go home. And um, we drove home, but on the way I called two people from my church and I told them what was happening. I said they should go to the house and tell my son whom I knew might have been there with his family that he should not attempt to take anything out of the house and uh, he should not allow anyone who was helping to also go inside when the fire was burning. They should just get the fire officers. So we got to the house. By the time we got to the house, they had called the firefighters and they had been there. They had put out the fire. They burned down the whole place. But I thank God that nobody was hurt. When I got there and I asked, is everything okay? And I saw my son, his wife, the children. And I was told that there was no casualty. I gave glory to God. And I then said that God will take charge from now, from then on. And, and I thank God that by now we have, we have rebuilt the place. I thank God that it was my knowledge of him through the years that gave me the peace of mind and the, the encouragement not to break down by this fire issue. Because I, I, I just didn't understand how, why it should happen so. I had gone to church. My children were living in the house too, had gone to church, it was a Sunday. And this thing just happened like that. I knew that God will not allow anything to any any test, any serious thing to happen to me without him controlling it. My name is Yunana Yakubo. I came from Adama State Madagalakal government. The hustle with by as how my body be saving another person I beg I go they beg for us. So God help me, I'm doing Wakada works. The fact that I'm alive today is a testimony. You understand, so many people have died, but I'm still alive to give God the glory for what he has done and for what he's yet to do. Though I have not been where I'm supposed to be, but I thank God I'm not where I used to be. So it's a testimony. Well, I quit my job around last year for my makeup training, and as I was about to finish the makeup job, my boss gave me an offer to work with her, so I think I'm blessed in the name of the God for that. God gave me life and also gave my family life, my mom, my dad, and my sisters. We need to thank him. You don't have anything, Sha. I look at the things I've gone through that I'm going through and I, um, how, how um, overwhelming they are. But you see, I see people look at me and say, oh, you look beautiful. You look like me. They don't see what it is that is going on. Be because I have a reason to thank God for being alive and a reason for people to thank God on my behalf and for people to look at me and be blessed by my smile, by the way I dress, by, you know, it's a, it's a testimony, it's a miracle. The baby you see me carrying is part of my testimony over what God has done for me. My family, God has kept us alive all the days of our 
from the day we started as a family till today. God has kept us together and blessed us with the fruit of womb. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast. My driver took a friend and I from Ikoi to Ikeja one day in a car he rarely drives. On our way back, we complained about his driving and thought perhaps he was nervous. The following evening, around 8 p.m., as we were returning from the gym, the driver complained that the car tire was a little wobbly. The car developed a noisy creaking sound, so I asked him to park so I could have a feel of the problem. When I started the car, I discovered that there was no power in the steering and that the tire was freewheeling and could no longer be driven. Thankfully, I was very close to my house, so let the driver with the car to arrange for a rescue service. Thankfully, I was able to find some mechanics at that time to fix the tire. And these guys fixed my car in one of the fiercest thunderstorms I've ever experienced. They discovered that the nuts on the rim were missing and informed me that had we been driving in stop speed, we would have had a fatal accident. We drove that tire in top speed the previous day. Thank you, Father, for everything. The miracle of what God has done in my life, they're too numerous to mention, but I think in the last six months or one year, is a miracle of us being able to birth our theater space and also to be working with Lagos State Government to create six more spaces for our youths. And you can imagine what that does to the economy and to their unemployment situation in Nigeria. So I'm eternally grateful to God for the privilege of using me as a tool um, to bring that to come to pass. Wow, what wonderful testimonies we've heard today. I'm sure you've been blessed by one or more of the stories. What the Lord has done for one, he'll do for others. So I'm sure your testimony is next. Why don't you join us next time on A Testimony A Day. Until then, it's bye-bye.